Today's video is going to show two things. One, how to calculate your dye percentages so you can get a pale to a deep shade and everything in between consistently in metric. And number two, you're going to be able to take this, these ratios and percentages, which of course is in the description, a link to my Google Drive with a photo of this so you can print it out and follow along and turn it into a triad dyeing experience. So you can see how the colors interact with each other and learn about, you know, complementary and analogous and split triad and all that other fun stuff using just three dye colors. In my case, the turquoise that I used from Pro Chem and Dye is really overtaking the other colors. I would suggest you use a different blue. Just make sure the blue is a primary from Dharma or Pro Chem or Gay Wool or Greener Shades or Aljo Manufacturing, depending on what country you're in and what you can get. So we're going to be taking these ratios and percentages and turning it into this lovely gradient right here. We'll need 66 10 gram skeins. In this case, this is 100% superwash merino, and it's about 20 yards um, of DK weight. 66 small glass ball jars. You can get them at Target or Costco. A good double barrel respirator. I wouldn't use the cheap cotton ones. A digital jewelry scale, and it must weigh fractions of a gram. Hot pink, flavine yellow, and turquoise. This is wash fast acid dye from Pro Chem and Dye. Scissors and hole punch. Laminated tags to keep the colors straight. These are in my Google Drive folder and there's a link in the description. And the colors, the way I see how I have one through 66, I'm numbering them one through 11, 12, etc. And then I also have a copy of the actual ratio as well as the color picker for the triad in that same Google Drive folder. You're going to want to soak your minis for at least a couple hours so they're thoroughly saturated and the color is even. And we have all 66 jars laid out in order. We have our reference chart here that shows exactly how much dye per color bubble. Jeweler's scale, hot pink, flavine, yellow, turquoise, and our mask. So now we're gonna take our smidgen measurement. We're gonna go to our very first color right here, and it's 0.3, so one third of a gram of magenta. So we're gonna turn this on, and you wanna make sure it's got your weighted measurement already on it. Okay, let's see. It's two grams. Okay, I'm gonna take some of that off. Now we're gonna take our dye, and we're gonna put it into jar number one in the corner. Now it's very important that you use a paper towel and you clean this out dry thoroughly in between every single one so you don't get any contamination. Now, as we can see on the next one, it's going to be 0.27 of the magenta and 0.03 of yellow. So I'm not going to bore you with this whole triad, but it's probably going to take me several hours to weigh out. So all you have to do is follow along row by row with how much it tells you for each. Dye powders weighed out. We fill our containers about three quarters full and you put about a half a teaspoon or a quarter teaspoon of citric acid in each and then we're just going to take our pre-wet skein give it a nice little swish and there you go and see we've got it numbered and we fill this up and we're gonna put these on the heat for a half an hour you can see all our dye has absorbed and now just strain them out and keep the tag with it. There's our finished triad, so let's get a nice close-up of these middle colors. Now 
So some notes. I think I would do this next time at 2% instead of 3% because this blue overtook all the middle colors that were supposed to be more in the shaded tonal family and just made them green. And as you can see, the purple variation here, literally the blue took over all of it. But we've got a really nice color gradation here to here. So in the future, use a different blue than Prochem's turquoise if you want more variation. But overall, it's beautiful and it turned out really good. All right, so question. Uh, how do we come up with all the ratios and numbers in this uh, triangle? So it's actually, once you wrap your head around it, pretty straightforward. So you start with three colors. In this example, we're using cyan, yellow, and magenta, CYM, but it should work with any three colors. It just might not look exactly like this. So you start with your points. Each point of this triangle has a pure color. So this is pure cyan, pure yellow, pure magenta. Pretty simple. So that means that this has 100% cyan, 0% yellow, 0% magenta, 100% yellow, 0 cyan, 0 magenta, 100 magenta, 0 cyan, 0 yellow. Okay. Now, each of these edges will linearly interpolate between the two points, which is fancy talk for which means um, they're going to be. Um, mixtures of only these two colors and in the center it'll be exactly 50 50. so here we have 90 percent cyan 10 percent yellow 80 percent cyan 20 percent yellow etc the ratios in each of these cells always add up to 100 so once you know uh one of the ones along the edge you also immediately know the other one so same here where this is 90 percent yellow 10 percent magenta 80% yellow, 20% magenta, all the way down here is 90% magenta, 10% yellow, and then we're again back at 100% magenta, 0% yellow. Now the tricky part, uh, the inside cells. So the way we get these values is we take the edge opposite one of the points, and that edge is that color's zero row. Meaning, here we have cyan, so this is cyan's zero row, meaning every cell in here has 0% cyan. The row directly above this has 10% cyan. This row has 20% cyan, and so on and so forth. 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. Likewise, with magenta. This is magenta, so this edge opposite magenta's point is magenta's zero row. So all of these will have 0% magenta, then 10% magenta, 20% magenta, 30% magenta, and so on and so forth. Same with yellow. So with that method, we can calculate the individual percentages of each of those internal cells. So for example, for this one, we know, okay, so that would be uh, 90, 80, 70, 60% cyan. This would be uh, 90, 80, 70, 60, 50, 40, 30% yellow, and so on and so forth. And again, those all up, add up to 100. Okay, so those are your percentages. Now, um, to actually use that for dyeing, um, you need to know two things. You need to know the weight of your skin and you need to know the depth of shade which in this example, we're using 10 gram skeins at 3% depth of shade. So there's a dye atlas that's available that will show you um, the weight of dye powder. Base. And it looks like this. Yes. And go in the description, there's a copy of it on my Google Drive for you. So on that table, you will find the weight of dye powder to use based on weight of skein and depth of shade. So in this example, uh, for 10 gram skeins at 3%, that means 0 0.3 grams of dye powder. Keep that in mind. So what we then do is we 
multiply the percentage or the ratios in these cells with that weight. So for the points for cyan, it's 100% cyan, 0% alo, 0% magenta. So 100% cyan times 0.3 grams means for this cell, you would just use 0.3 grams of your cyan. Pretty straightforward. Now, at the edges where it's 50-50, you have 50% cyan, 50% yellow, which means 50% of 3 grams is 0.15 gram. Did I say 50% of 3 grams? 50% so of 0 0.03. Yes, yeah, so that's 50% of 0.3 grams is 0.15 grams, and 50% of uh, 0.3 grams for yellow is 0.15 grams of yellow. So this is that. And so you basically take the percentages in each of those cells, multiply that with your base amount of uh, dye, and there you go. Now, if that sounds confusing, uh, that's because it can be very confusing at first, but in this triangle, um, we've done those calculations for you for those values, and we're also gonna be adding a version of this triangle that has actual ratios and percentages in it so that you can use that to calculate you know, whatever dyes and colors you will be working with. And if you have any questions, ask Nicole. She knows <laughs> everything there is to know about this. <laughs> Thanks, babe. If you are a backer at Ko-Fi, one lucky person is going to be chosen to win all of this. The dye reference chart, a Dharma dye atlas, a laminated color picker, and 660 grams of superwash merino. It's a fairly easy concept, but it took me a lot of years to figure out because I was so used to dyeing in ratio as opposed to metric that the whole idea didn't really make sense. So when you look at the following photo, I want you to notice the varying degrees of strength of the dye. That's called the color value. As you can see, it's yellow. Now, 1%, 2%, 3%, and 4% weight of dye per weight of goods. And this is done in metric. So we're doing this in grams, not volumetric, which is the imperial system. So I'm not giving you a tablespoon of dye and two and a half pounds of yarn gives you a medium shade. This is much more precise, easier to scale up and down, and you'll have much more repeatability if you learn to dye in metric. So because a lot of people are math afraid, frankly, and I don't enjoy mathing myself, I made a really, really, really handy chart. And that's going to be in the description. There is a link to my Google Drive with all the materials throughout this video. But it basically shows, and I'm going to see if I can get this put up in the next slide, what a pale shade looks like, which is half a percent to one and a half percent, medium two to two and a half, two to three, deep shade is three and a half to four and a half, and a near black shade for that any given color is five to six percent. So what does that exactly mean? Let's say we have a 100 gram skein and we want a pale shade of pink. So we would choose 1% because it's in the pale column. And then you go over to how big your skein is, 100 grams, and there it is. It tells you that you need one gram of dye. So if you had 10 gram skeins, then it would be 0.01 gram of dye, right? So it's very simple to scale this up and back. And this is the reason why when you buy bags of yarn for dyeing, it's not three and a half ounces or four ounces, they're a hundred grams. Because let's say you wanted to do a solid shade purple sweater. If you're doing this volumetric by the imperial system, you're gonna have to go, okay, so that would be maybe four tablespoons of citric acid and probably like two and a half tablespoons of dye. And you know, it's, it, it's impossible to add and subtract in your head volumetrically in imperial whereas if you wanted you know 10 skeins that each weigh 100 grams to four percent which is a deep shade that's 40 grams a dye right four grams per skein times 10 there you go 
Now, if that doesn't make sense, that's okay. I have, like I said, in the description, there is a link to this. And it's going to give you my personal dye stock recipe. It's gonna talk about the pH range of the fiber necessary for this, the dye to strike and stay. And it's even got, I made a ratio, so you can just plug in the amount of your fiber, the, the color you want, and it'll spit out the number. So that is how you dye in ratio. So that's why I have a photo. Um, I mean, it's so simple, honestly. And the amount of water that you use does not matter. This is probably the thing that baffled me the most. When it comes to acid reactive dyeing on, on protein fibers, it's the amount of dye to the amount of yarn, right? Amount of dye, amount of yarn. If you had this same yarn in a small cup or a large cup and you were dyeing it, the amount of dye in the water is going to attract to the yarn regardless of how low it is or high it is. As long as it's enough to cover the top of the fiber, you'll get the same shade. So it's just attracting the dye molecules in the, in the bath to the yarn regardless of the amount of water in the bath. Obviously, if it's too low, you'll get patchy results. So that is that. And uh, thanks again, backers at Ko-Fi, for keeping this whole operation going.